Hello and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have the book, head over to www.cdschools.org slash blenderbasics to download a free copy. This video will focus on chapter 5 materials and textures using the classic Blender render engine. Uh, we're going to make a separate video for cycles. So right now we're going to focus on just how do we use the classic render engine. So if you pop on over to Blender, what I've done right now to save a little time is set up an initial scene where I've added a cube, a UV sphere, a monkey head, and a plane. Um, just to give us a basic scene, I've put the camera in a good location to show us you know, all the features. I've actually hit Shift D to duplicate the lamp, and when I hit F12 and render a picture, this is what it currently looks like. Everything is just gray because I haven't put any materials and textures on anything yet. So we have a basic scene. So I'm going to start with the cube. So if I pick the cube, you're going to see we have a couple of buttons over here. Um, materials and textures. So first thing I have to do is add a material to the cube in order to be able to add a texture later on. And this is something brand new to uh, Blender 2.8. You know, see that's out here right now that you don't see the texture panel until you actually add a material and that's a good thing for blender because you can't add a texture until you add a material and a lot of students always start out they start putting textures on wonder why they don't work you have to add that material first so I add a material to the cube actually I had the plane select let me pick the cube here first so let's put one on the cube and you know remember we talked a little bit in the last chapter about the diffuse color and specular specular diffuses the color you actually see so if I were to change the diffuse color to say green. Now the cube will be green. Um, the specular is basically that reflection, that glossy spot that you see whatever color that we want to use. Intensity would be how uh, intense that spot is or how flat it is. So if that's somewhere down in the middle it won't be very glossy at all. So let's take that down to about 0.4. Okay, and there are a lot of other settings within this materials panel. As you go down through, you have an emit, which would be emitting some of its own light to kind of make it look like it's not in the shadows. Transparency panel, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Mirror to make something reflective. Um, there are some other options as you scroll down. You can even control how shadows are generated. So there are a lot of neat features within the material setting itself. I want to make this thing look like it's a brick wall. So if I go over to the textures panel now, I can now add a texture. By default, it's basically saying image or movie, but you can change it to a lot of different things. Blender has a lot of built-in texture generators. Wood is a popular one. Uh, the Stushi is also another popular texture that you could use for different things. And they're really neat because um, they work with some of the other features down here within the, the texture panel. Um, basically in here, there's one under influence called normal under geometry, which will basically take a look at dark and lights within your texture and push them up and down to make it look like it has a little depth which we'll demonstrate in a few minutes. What I want to do is I want to make this thing look like a brick wall. So now that I've told it that I want the type to be an image or movie, I'm going to go down here to the image panel, hit open, and I'm going to browse out to my desktop where I have a folder full of texture maps and go into the brickstone concrete folder. I'm going to hit the thumbnail button up here at the top. Uh, these textures are available for download as a zip file from the uh, CD Schools website where you can find the Blender book. So if you need some textures, go take a look at that. I'm just going to use this basic boring brick. I'm going to double click it and it's showing up in my preview. It doesn't show up in my preview window, so I'm going to hit F12 and render a quick picture. And you'll see that there is now a brick texture within that cube, but it's a little messed up. You know, it's going on some strange angles, doesn't, doesn't look quite right. So here's what we need to fix next. The classic render engine used to always default your mapping under coordinates to generate it. It's, for some reason the change has been made to make it to say UV by default. So I'm going to change that to generate it. And now when I hit F12 that cube is going to look a little different. It's going to be mapping the brick sec texture on the top of the cube and stretching it down the sides. And the reason why it's doing this it's over here under where I changed it to generate it. It's being mapped flat. So it's being mapped as a flat object and being stretched down the size. Now, that could be a, a desirable texture for something that we're doing, but it's not too good for me. So I'm going to change this from flat to cube. Now when I hit F12, it's going to be mapped on every face of the cube. 
Okay, so now we have the cube. It has a, a brick texture on every face. To make it look like it pops, that these mortar joints aren't just painted on, that they actually look like they have some depth. I'm gonna go down to the geometry button and hit this normal. Okay, when I hit normal, normal is basically going to look at the lights and darks in a picture and try to push them one way or the other. And you can take them in a negative direction or a positive direction, depending on what you wanna try to do. So I'm gonna take that normal up a little bit higher and see what I can get. Some pictures it does a great job with, some pictures it takes a little bit more. Okay, so now it's kind of making the mortar joints look like they're popping a little bit. Okay, let's do something with the floor now. So I'm going to select the floor, escape out of that view. Let's put a material on the floor first, which I already did by accident. Um, I'm going to make this look like some type of stone flooring that's been polished. No, actually, actually, let's make it look like a, a wood floor that's been polished with a little reflection on it. So I'm not going to really mess with anything over here in materials yet. I'm now going to go to the texture panel. If you don't see your buttons, it's because you need to scroll back up to the top. New. Let's pick image or movie. Let's hit the open button. And we're going to go back in here to my... Go back and right here we have some wood textures. We'll hit thumbnail so I can take a look at my various wood textures that I have available. And I'm just gonna pick, um, oh, I don't know, we'll go with some of this nice looking wood here. I do have some wood floors over in interior decor, but I think I'm gonna work with that one for right now. If I F12 and render it, it's not gonna look quite right because it probably still says UV mapping down here. So I'm gonna change UV to generate it. F12 that again okay so I got a wood texture but it's pretty wide okay so I've got some different ways to map it I can change my size here or I can open up this image mapping panel and here's a repeat feature so I can repeat that texture a few times in the X and Y direction and take a look at it again as I hit F12 to render now it's looking a little more interesting let's take that up a little bit more F12 or enter it again. Okay, so as I continue to add features, things will slow down a little bit here right now. And this computer's kind of taxed a little bit since I'm trying to video capture and run these renders at the same time. I'm going to go back over to the materials panel now, and I want this to look a little reflective. So I'm going to scroll down here to the mirror panel, check it, open it up, and now we're working with ray trace. And here's some reflectivity with this. I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. If I look at my preview sample, it'll show me some of that reflection. Let's hit F12 and see what we get out of this. And it'll also be reflecting the world setting. So there's going to, it's going to be kind of looking gray because my world is kind of gray right now. But now you're starting to see some reflection from these other objects in the floor. You know, especially the ears of the monkey head look pretty good. Okay, so I got a little reflection, but this is pretty flat. Let's give this wood grain a little texture. So I'm going to go back over to the texture panel. I'm going to scroll down to that influence panel. And under geometry, I'm going to check the normal button. Now, now that I checked it, you're going to see it actually continuing to render, picking up that, that normal setting up. And you see how it really, really deeply grooved the wood. I don't quite want that much. I'm going to go with maybe 0.1 instead of a full 1. Okay, and we're going to hit F12 again. We're going to render another picture and see what that looks like. So now you've got a little ripple to that surface with the reflection. And you can really start to see it popping in here now. So materials, textures all work together. Normal is a great button to use often. It gives you a little bit of depth to your texture. Okay, so let's do something with the monkey head. We're going to escape out of that render. I'm going to select the monkey head. I just want him to look like he's polished brass. So we're going to add a material to the bunk monkey. Again, scroll back up to the top of the panel. Add a new material. Oops, I'm actually a material. I don't want a texture on this one. I'm going to just delete that off of there. So back to material. We're going to make this kind of a yellow. Kind of a deeper yellow here. Oops. 
There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to go back down to the mirror panel. And this one's actually going to be pretty easy. We're just going to take reflection up pretty high. So it's a pretty reflective monkey head. We'll render a picture. I won't render the whole thing. We'll stop it after we see a little bit of the monkey. And now we're getting a very reflective monkey head here. It's reflecting the grays. It's reflecting the floor texture. And it's working pretty well. Okay, escape out of that. And let's select the ball this time. Um, this time, the only thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to mess with transparency on this. So, we scroll down to the transparency panel and we check it. Now, the old, old-fashioned Blender transparency is called Z-transparent. Basically, it just means taking your alpha slider down and you will just see through it. But if this were really a crystal ball, it would be distorted as you look through it. For that, we have to use the ray trace features. And the, um, the Fresnel, we're going to take that up a little bit. Fresnel is basically, if I can look at my sample up here, I'm going to close up a couple of panels so I don't have to keep scrolling around. Okay, Fresnel gives it some transparency with a little glow around the edge. Um, I'm going to take my index of refraction, refraction up a little bit. Refraction is basically distortion that you see through something. Hit F12 to render a picture. You can also mess with the alpha setting to make it a little bit more transparent. But there you have some distortion through a crystal ball. Sometimes when you add transparency to an object, especially if you're making something like a drinking glass or something like that, you might have to take the depth up a little bit higher so you see through more surfaces as it reflects through. Um, what might be neat to add to this crystal ball is to actually make it look a little ripply, like it has a ripple to it. The best way to do that would be for me to go over to the texture panel and add a texture to this crystal ball. Instead of an image or movie, I'm going to actually use Stucci, and as I scroll down, um, what Stucci actually does for you, and I'm going to escape out of that render, um, it gives you basically just uh, a, a little ripple texture to an object, and if you change the size of it to make it smaller or larger, you can actually make it look all the way down to like um, the stipple you would see on a painted wall or something larger like the ripples that you might see on a swimming pool, and it can even be animated later on. For mapping, I'm just going to turn this back to generate it, and I'm going to hit the normal button because remember normal is what gives you depth. And then one last thing I'm going to do with the Stucci is that by default, it's going to try to show this secondary color. I'm going to change it from mix to an overlay, and that basically just overlays the texture onto it and kind of avoids that color. Hit F12. Let's see what that looks like without making any changes to the normal setting. And there you have it. It kind of looks like a ripply ball. If you were to animate that setting, which we will talk about later in an animation channel, because um, you can animate anything that has a number on it. You can animate everything over time. Um, looks kind of neat. I could probably play around with it a little bit more, but these are just some of the basic settings that you can do with materials. I recommend reading the chapter to see what all the different things can do so that you can um, get a really good grasp on how the materials and textures work together and what they can do. So for now, that's about it for the uh, internal render engine. Thanks for watching.